Do you ever feel stuck like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Welcome to this podcast recording of the Play Big Podcast. And you know, perseverance pays off. We've been trying to coordinate this for um, several months, and Forbes Riley and I, we, uh, we, our, our calendars are just like always in conflict, but today we're together. So Forbes, thanks so much for being with me today on this Play Big Movement Hub podcast. And, you know, I can give you her history, but it would take me all day. What an incredible history you have, Forbes. Um, you had some challenges as a kid. We've all had things that stopped us on our track and, you know, this whole launch of my Play Big Movement. But also coming out and we do, we were just off camera, we're talking about how as women, we've had to learn how to stand in our own power. And so I think it's really important for us to talk about that yet because her, her, she's had several careers, all incredibly successful, as responsible for billions of dollars of sales on um, online television and, and has her own entire new dynasty, the CEO of fitness here. Um, with the spin gems, and I'm just so proud and honored to know her. But when I look at her, I see her, she's always, you talk about one big life, which I talk about. She always is the epitome of one big life. She lights up the room she enters, and you know, she's dedicated to lighting up your life as well. I see it oh, time and time and time again. She invests herself in the people that are in front of her. So Forbes, thank you for being with me today. Oh, Miss Sharon, it is quite an honor. I just think that you are, you know, in a world where I have very few role models and very few heroes, you, my girl, are it. You really are. And, and I look the way that you're just lighting up the screen. And, and you light up my life. And my, my 16-year-old daughter was just in here. She's had a pleasure to meet you as well. And I got to say, you, what you've achieved and how elegant, gracious, and beautiful you show up is truly an energy source for me as well. So, love to you. Oh, thank you. Mutual admiration society here. So when we talk about the play big movement um, for we talk about the fact that we all have things that stop us in our tracks and then really to have that bigger vision and to see what's possible in our lives. And that's re it really is what all, you're all about, particularly when you're talking to people, you help them identify their own blocks. So tell us a little bit more about the little girl Forbes Riley and how you got from those days because you had several things that impacted you as a young child that you were able to persevere and get past what people see you today and they see the Forbes Riley today they don't understand that it was not all roses along the way there was a little girl in Long Island who grew up almost 60 years ago uh, whose name was Francine Forbes and though she had two loving parents, uh, by the age of eight, uh, and I'll use my name, it's not I'm not her, I, don't, I, I, uh, I had a baseball bat hit my nose and, and kind of grew off the side of my face, which is interesting because my son now has got a bit of a broken nose and we're gonna eventually have to fix it. But on a girl, it looked really bad. I sucked my thumbs, so I braces for eight years. Imagine from eight till 16 railroad tracks. And at some point, Sharon, I had a little tongue thruster. So I can check the way I talk like this, and I was in speech therapy. Let me tell you, it was the 60s, so we ate fast food. My mom, bless her and miss her, was 260 pounds my whole life. So I was like a chunky 30 to 40 pound kid with big thighs and frizzy hair. And I was really smart. You know what that made me? Really unpopular. I used to look at the little girls who were blonde like Marsha Brady and were cute and be so envious and, and, and jealous to the point that I was this loner. I was shy. I was book smart. And that's where I found all of my, my love and my life between books, television, and movies. In fact, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me about 1960s television trivia from F Troop to the Brady Bunch, Partridge Family, and Monsters, and I will win because those were my friends. Now, the irony of that is I think my parents thought I was kind of weird, but it's paid off because what I saw 
was different worlds. I learned to dream. I learned to dream so big that I'm going to the moon with Star Trek or I'm going to Europe. I'm with Audrey Hepburn. And in my mind, I could create anything. Well, then I was 15 and my dad had an industrial accident. We sliced off the whole front of his hand. And uh, he would then spend three years in the hospital, 15 operations. Mm. And again, you know, going back there, if I could talk to that little girl and tell her it's going to be okay, because she had no idea. But she did have a dream of going off to school. And my mom comes to me one day and says, you know what? We've got no money. You are first in your class, but we can't, you don't have any scholarships and we can't afford to send you. But there's this pageant. I'm like, mom, she's like, no, no, don't worry. It's not a beauty pageant. That's what a kid wants to hear, right? A teenage girl. Well, my dad's doctor heard that. And he fixed my nose for free. I had a nose job when I was 15 years old. The braces came off. I had these killer teeth that I couldn't wait to share with you. <laughs> and I ended up winning. With, but now here's the funny thing. So the pageant started out in the local mall. But the winner was going to be on NBC with Bob Hope. And I thought, you know, I could do this for my dad. And it was truly the first time if I had a look back where I had this vision, this dream, this why, and I had a why because I'm holding my dad's good hand saying, I can do this for my family. And I went through the entire process, as ridiculous those things can be, and I won. I was Miss Teenage New York. And I ended up next to Bob Hope. And, I, and here's the other crazy thing. I had this weird vision of my future so clearly that when I was a kid, we didn't have one of these. I had a camera like this, but I took hundreds of photos and video because I think I knew back then that I was going to need this. I have a great photo of me and Bob Hope. And I didn't win the national. But again, and this is the principle of my whole life, that you're the sum of the obstacles you overcome and that life happens for you, not to you. So I go down there, and I'm talking like this, right? Because I'm like from New York, okay? I'm wearing Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the girl's like, y'all have the funniest accent I ever heard. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Really, I have an accent? Well, I did. I learned to speak differently. I learned to walk differently. I wouldn't have never learned any of those things, but I didn't win. And you know, when you go to the FU School of Business, going, who oh, you, I have a new hashtag. It's called hashtag watch me. Watch me. And most of my life, I've lived that energy going, you don't think I can do it? Watch me. You don't think I can do this, that, and the other thing? And I've created miracles because I've so, been so busy trying to prove myself, which ironically at this point in my life now, I'm, I'm looking at things differently. I don't have to prove anymore. Let me, ju let me jump in here a second because all of you, um, think about what, what Forbes just said, the watch me attitude. If you know her and you know her reputation today, what she's just shared is probably a little surprising because that's not something that uh, she's shared a lot before. Mm -hmm. And it's something that uh, it is, you never know the story behind the story. And the whole watch me, you've heard me talk about my why not philosophy, the same thing. I mean, I was the, the smartest kid. I was real popular at test time, but I was always on the fringe of the popular kids. I was part of them, but not part of them, right? And, uh, but during test time, I, would, I was everybody's favorite because they wanted to be able to check out my answers. So, but it's the same thing. It's why not do what hasn't been done yet? And you watch me, prove yourself. And that's kind of the, when somebody tells you you can't, you probably have the same reaction I do. You, that's not my reaction opinion. is watch me. My I reaction mean, is why not? <laughs> I love it. Now, but that's not quite big enough. Mine is, there's a little F you in front of the watch me in my head. That's how powerful it drives me. And I'll tell you what, so you've seen my fitness product, right? Mm -hmm. The whole company, and it's a multi, multi-million dollar company, was built on that premise. I ended up on a reality show and pretty much told that it was going to go nowhere. And in front of the entire country on Discovery, I was made to cry. I put five months of my life into this. And kind of like the Titanic, it started out really good. It didn't end up really good. And my ex-husband turned to me the next morning after it aired. Spin Gym was the number one Googled word. Forbes Riley was number three. There were 5,000 people on YouTube saying not so nice things because I didn't know reality wasn't reality. So when they said to me, hey, we've got a cheap plastic version of this. And I said, I would never put my name on a piece of cheap plastic, whatever you'd sell for $9.99. Edit, edit. America saw, I would never sell anything for $9.99. Well, I didn't say those things. So my partner the next morning said, hey, so what are you going to do now? I'm like, going to make spin gyms. He said, but everyone thinks you're wrong. And I said, well, they, they're, they're wrong. He said, well, they can't all be wrong. And I'm like, they are. And I'll tell you, Sharon, for the first time in my life, after all the things I've been through, you all need to listen to this. I did something. I pushed my chips in. There was no plan B. I mortgaged my house and my kids' education. I don't necessarily recommend that 
unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, and by the way, I have failed a lot since then. I've gone to an amazing MBA, uh, sitting in US Customs while they wanted to throw out 22,000 product, uh, all kind of adversity. But I'm gonna tell you, if you're in it to win it and you've got a clear enough vision, a why, a dream, and a team around you, you really can move mountains. But you gotta be willing to understand it. nothing happens overnight. There are no, there are only 20 year overnight successes. That's and awesome. I think so many people look at us, Sharon, and go, well, you had it easy. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's easy easy for her to say, yeah, if you only knew, right? And it is part of, you know, you say put, put all your chips in. You really have to make that commitment. And, and uh, so many people give up right before the miracle happens. I mean, they just, they don't have that perseverance. And I know I think you're even referred to oftentimes as the queen of perseverance. Each and every one of you, know, if we want something badly enough, it's that desire combined with action and never giving up where you get the results. And it is, you know, it, it, it's never easy street. It may look that way when you look back, but that's not how we got there. It was a zigzag path, right? Well, now I'm calling it course correction. Cause I've, you know, I've, I've recently started, you just said I don't share a lot of this. I've never shared anything about me at all because I didn't understand the word vulnerable was an important word. I didn't realize that my life matters a lot more when I affect other people. And when you're an actress, it's all about you. The universe has led me to a path that says, you know what, Forbes, you are really needing to affect a lot of people by being vulnerable to show them the truth of how you got here and what it takes. So this course thing, you know, when you're, I don't sail very well, but I know the concept. If you change your life one degree over time, you end up in a completely different place. Mm -hmm. You always do that. See, I have this motorboat mentality. I want to get there, I want to get there, right? A lot of entrepreneurs do but you're never a motorboat, you're a sailboat. And so you're going straight, like you're from here to here, but the wind blows you, now you're like over here. You have to course correct. And the cool thing I think about my life now is course correct quickly. Don't let the thing that knocks you off keep you there. Don't sit around and bitch about it, get back up on the horse and keep going. If you I'm, want it bad enough. I'm smiling because I use a very similar analogy. I go, you know, you, you can't get to where you wanna go unless you know where you are and where you wanna be. And just like a sailboat, you know, you're not necessarily going to go in a straight line. It's usually a zigzag path. But if you don't know where you want to go, you don't know how to course correct. So you got to know what your end goal is so that you can recalibrate and keep going. Well, I'm on a little bit of a new path, too. And I know it's your show, but I'm going to ask you a question. Is that okay? <laughs> no, because you are my role model. One of the things that I'm suffering from right now is that when you get to a certain level as a woman and you look up and you're like, wow. Okay, in the speaker world, I'm looking at the Grant Cardones and Gary Vee's and Tony Robbins, and, and there's a lot of them. And I look at the women, and I'm like, who do I look at? Mm -hmm. What is your take on being a powerful, successful woman? What do you, how do you manage to balance it? Because you seem to do it beautifully. Well, thank you for that compliment. And there aren't that many of us. And I think you know, a lot of times um, we tend to say yes to everything, and that's something that I've, I have trained myself not to say yes to everything because I want to make sure I don't I won't share the stage with just anybody I you know, one of the things when I'm asked to keynote something I want to know who else is on stage and the team around me is highly protective of me making sure things are set up correctly because you know if the the brand recognition the reputation for me is priceless much more important to me than going and collecting a $25,000 check somewhere. I wanna make sure that what I'm doing is consistent with who I am and, and what I want to accomplish. And that it's the right audience. And um, it, it, there are not enough female speakers. And part of that is getting people to recognize that, you know, we, they need more of us, right? They need us out there more and that we are ready, willing and able. Um, and it's, part of it is just, time right and continuing to persevere and making sure you get the right people out there representing you that's me we, we actually right now are interviewing a couple of different speakers agents for the same reason you know, making sure we get in front of more audiences good i love it so tell me about what spin gem has been a huge success and i know it's still a huge part of what you're doing but tell me what else the forbes factor tell me what else makes one big life for Forbes Riley. Well, number one, um, and I just did a little video of him, I'm in love. Joshua. And here's Joshua, and I will say he did just show up to my meeting with no shirt on. Um, <laughs> that never gets old. 
I will tell you, we've endured a lot of, um, and I'm enjoying this, amazing prejudice. I am 17 years older than him. And we are, it's two years now, and we're very, very happy. And we do have a lot of fun with this relationship. I created an Instagram called Love Story Times 2 because I, I look at me in the photo, I look at the girl in the photo and go, she's really happy for the first time ever in her life and she's giddy and she's playful. And I didn't really have that. You know, Sharon, I was driving about three years or so ago and a friend of mine said, hey, um, you know, when you speak, you don't post anybody else on your, on your page. You know, I know you're a mom. Are you married? And I said, you, why? And so because I want to share something with you, you don't mind. He said, but you've got something missing from your work. And I'm like, what? And he said, love. And I'm like, screw you. And I think I said it. Just like, don't worry. Because I'm like, I love everybody. I love lots of people. I mean, but he was right. What I hadn't done, and I think when you go through this, and there's women who have been trodden on in whatever way and for whatever reason, because I had my own little self-esteem issues that I've been worked out, but if you don't come from a real solid place of having people love you and not admire you, that's not the kind of love. I'm talking about the kind of love when the makeup comes off and the breath doesn't smell very good and my hair's all kind of goofy in the morning and says, you know what? You're still the most beautiful woman in the world. And Sharon, and I feel so blessed to have not missed that because I was getting a big edge to me. And I think, you know, I grew up, I hate Walt Disney. Okay to say that? Hate Walt Disney. So you watch the movies, right? Mother's dead in Dick Bambi and Dumbo. Stepmother's got to be some evil queen, and she's always like really nasty, and she's in every single movie. She's a witch. Then the princess has got long, flowing hair and a tiny little waist and lots of long dresses, and then she waits for Prince Charming to wake her up, put a slipper on her, or get her, and bam, they live happily, happily ever after. Well, I learned happily ever after, actually, she has to do the laundry and the dishes, and he farts in bed. They never do that, right? <laughs> but then luckily, this movie came along called Shrek. And when the princess had an opportunity to turn into beautiful Cameron Diaz, she didn't. She was a big, fat, green ogre with goofy ears. And you know what? I'm like, I literally screamed at that movie going, yes, yes, yes. Because we're not all the same. We're not this, this cookie cutter image. However, I was kind of wired to think someday somebody would save me. And I think I kept thinking that in the back of my mind. And I was getting kind of bitter about it. And luckily, this man came into my life. And I know he looks the way he does, and that's beautiful. But inside his heart, he's this beautiful little boy who wants to hang out with this goofy little girl. And every day is just better. So that's part of, of what I'm working on, keeping that alive, enjoying it, bringing it out to the world, which I never did before. Uh, but then I do this thing called Forbes Factor Live. And you know, Sharon, I've been doing this my whole life. I found videos of me dating back 20 years ago where I would intervene with people. I love hypnosis, and I was a magician, and mind melding, and how do you remember things and how does your brain talk to each other? And I've hit on something that's enlightened. I watch people physically change in five days before me. They are completely different and I'm devoting a lot of time and energy to Forbes Factor Live. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask people, for example, I don't know if I've asked you, what's your first memory in life? Um, walking home from school in Chicago where the snow is you know, several feet above me on either side. How old were you? Probably four. And what decision did you make about life based on that moment? Um, that I was in charge of the choices I made. Okay, girlfriend, let me share something with you. It's not what happens, it's the decision that you make. How does that decision show up in Sharon Lecter's life your whole life? Well, if it's, if it, it's that sentence, if it is to be, it's up to me. You know, he's never, never um, relying on someone else for my future. That so if I, I want to... all of your listeners to think about this for a second. That is not a typical decision. So you got snow up to here, a little girl walking. It could have been, oh my God, life is scary. And you could have ended up differently. Or I'm alone and I'm never fine. You can make all kinds of decisions. And having done this work now for almost 20 years, I'm hearing a lot of things. A lot, and it's four years old that your memory starts. And it's not really your first memory, but it, it's, it's what drives your hard drive. So many people I meet have been molested or hurt or made to think that they're not enough or not worthy. And even if I had one client fall out of a tree, break her arm, and nobody was there to really help her. Her parents weren't there, but friends took her to the hospital. Her decision is, oh my God, strangers will always be there to help me. And she's a very generous charity worker. Another client fell out of a tree, broke her arm, and parents weren't there. And her decision is, mom and dad hate me and no one's ever going to be there. And she's bitter and miserable. Same incident, different decision. And so part of my work has been to uncover this hard drive that drives everybody's life 
and adjust it like a chiropractor so that it's positive. And the funny thing is, as soon as you realize it, you're like, oh my God, I am that way. One of my girls recently, she's like, oh, I was so embarrassed by something that happened. Well, in talking to me, she must have said the word embarrassed as an adult about 10 times. I thought, that's not good enough for you, but you don't even hear it. So I tell people that a friend loves you the way you are. Forbes Riley loves you way too much to leave you that way. That's excellent. That ex you know, when I talk to people about money habits, I kind of take them along a very similar journey. I go, what did your parents say about money? And it very really is pinch your pennies, money doesn't grow on trees, we can't afford it. So as a child, as you're growing, you have money negative, money negative, money negative. And it's no, no wonder we grow up thinking that, that we live in a world of scarcity or we're a fear, fearful we're never gonna have enough money. Or when we get it, we're afraid we're gonna lose it. And so it's when you when can actually bring that awareness to people they can kind of, they can release it and realize that uh, you know we do live in a world of abundance and you have the opportunity. So I love that you do that. That's fantastic. Well, I found this principle a long time ago, and it seems to now be the basis of everyone that I talk to because it, it illuminates who and what they are. I did just have a class these last five days that was spectacular. We had women in the class. I have men and women, but these three particular women illuminated something for me that I'm going to share. One of my women in the class was three feet tall. Her name was Candy. Another one in the class is also named Candy, ironically, who has kind of half a face. She has an NF, a disease, where she was born with a massive tumor. And after lots of surgeries, it doesn't quite look like the other side of her face. Mm -hmm. And then this other woman is five foot ten and looks stunningly beautiful. What you don't know is the stunningly beautiful woman that these two other women looked up to uh, was crippled for many years, may have to have her leg amputated and was in a very abusive relationship. Her mom had eight husbands growing up. And then she also revealed that for her, as a married woman, she went to reach for her husband as he was kissing a friend over railing. He fell over and died. Oh my. Let me share something. What happened to the vibe in this class for all of us to look at three women, two of which their whole lives have dealt with, oh, poor me, I have a physical issue. I'm too small, I'm not pretty enough. Looking at what's really beautiful in their eyes and seeing it's not any better, but in fact worse. The gratitude, the love, the, I mean, I learn so much when I go to these and I produce them that I can't wait for the next one. We do it four times a year and it's in St. Pete. If anyone wants to know, it's Forbes Factor Live. Uh, very small, limited classes because I'm still doing them all. And I got to tell you, I love attending because we live our lives. We go along with the same way every day and nobody bumps in you and says, you know what? Let me show you that you're the coffee in the cup. Let me show you that mentors and masterminds do matter. But you keep doing this thing and you can't see the outside of the cup says something else. And so having that coaching for the first time in my life, I really understand. And I'm now being coached by a lot of different people because I was hitting ceilings too. That we can all benefit from having someone look at us who's gone down the path before us. My biggest thing, Sharon, was I was always afraid to ask for help because I thought it made me look weak. In fact, it's been the smartest thing I've ever done. Same thing. You know, we're so busy, you know, we end up at, we have blinders that we don't admit that are there. And, and when we wear those blinders, things, opportunities just pass us by because we, we, we're not keyed into the possibility that they are even there. And that's because of our past history, our lives, our own self-image. Um, you know, and everybody has a self-image at some point during their life. Um, and, you know, there, it's just as bad to have that over the top ego as it, you know, that's not good either because you're not going to live a quality life when you live your life at the expense of others. But when you, live your, when you live your life at the expense of yourself, that's not good. And that's something that both Forbes and I are dedicated to help change for you. Well, that's so, another thing that you got to look at yourself and look at your word, the word belief, which has L-I-E in the middle of it. It's a lie, okay? Everybody seems to believe that they are right in whatever their belief is. And I have this philosophy that everybody's belief is wrong. It's your belief. So you, 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 you can't make me believe what you believe. I've never seen a burning bush. So you can believe in him or her or it or that doesn't matter. But we get into a lot of trouble in this world when we go, my belief is right and yours is wrong. Yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. Then you have these all these beliefs about yourself that are in fact right or wrong or irrelevant. I believe I'm a klutz. I believe I'm this. I believe I'm too old or too young or too fat or too... Wow, I become a shattering belief monster. In fact, we call it bag of bones versus you. I have all of these isms. 
that I, I like to say about leap in the net will appear, turn off the news, don't, you know, don't manifest mediocrity, okay? They sound like magnets, right? Except when you use them. But in your bag of bones, you keep saying, oh, I'm not enough, my mom told me that, or I've been in a recent relationship, or I failed at business. And I gotta tell you, you gotta start squishing down the beliefs that don't serve, yes. It's killing most of us. Mm -hmm. And then we spout them out to the world. We'll tell people our limiting beliefs. We wonder why relationships don't work. Hi, nice to meet you. Let me tell you how horrible my last four marriages were. It's <laughs> this, is why the, this is why the airlines only let you take two bags. Don't bring all your luggage to everything you do and start out with this blech of stuff. Don't throw up on something. I love that. I absolutely love it. It's so true. I mean, I talk about, particularly for women, we tend to, uh, you know, our past mistakes, we allow it to define us. If you, know, you make a mistake, it's an occurrence. It's not a definition. And that's not, you know, and people accept it as a definition of them. And particularly women, we tend to carry, carry it like a big sack of potatoes on our back. And we need to say, hey, you know what? That happened. I'm going to learn from it and then move forward and not to destroy precious time today worrying about something that happened before today. So. Okay, and I think one of the reasons is because we all say this phrase and it's wrong. We say, oh, everything happens for a reason. No, it doesn't. That would mean that somebody up there is keeping score. Oh, we're going to make that happen and this happen. What if you start saying to yourself, everything happens and it's my job to come up with the reason. Mm -hmm. So when something really negative happens to you, you go, wow, I now know not to go look for a guy like that or those kind of people don't appreciate me if it's true that you get what you tolerate. And if you learn them as lessons, and by the way, bad things are going to happen to all of us. You know this as well as everybody else. People will die, they will hurt you, they will scam you, you will break a bone. Yes, all of those things are gonna happen. But how you deal with it is what separates the powerful people from the victims. That's right, turning them into learning opportunities. And that's where, that's where we truly make a mistake is if we don't learn from it, then we tend to repeat it. And the issue is if you allow that to color your future, then you are, you are limiting the possibilities for what you can create in your life. So. And they're kind of endless. We kind of come here for a second, speaking of my possibilities. You know, I don't know that I could have learned something so much from somebody so young. Come here, really quick. And I know that you've met my daughter, who has her book coming out called Every Company Needs a Kid. Okay, this little rock star, come here for a second. You say hi to she? Her whole audience is out. How are you? Hi. Wonderful to see you. Oh, I Mickey, you. <laughs> oh, sorry. I got all excited there and you fell off the pedestal. <laughs> just really quick, take a minute. She just came home from school and I got to tell you, what do you think of your mom? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about this whole speaking thing that we did? What do you think about that? Well, you know, we get on stage. You said to me when you were young, how come everybody gets on stage like lived in their car or has these horrible things happen to them? Oh, I can't, ag I can't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, I, I didn't hear something like a year ago. I asked her, because it wasn't really clicking, why were the only people speaking on stage um, gone through like something horrible or had been completely in poverty, anything like that. And then I think it hit me that you don't speak on stage unless something, like unless you overcame something. Because anybody who has it handed to you, like, yes, everything, why would they talk on stage? There's no point in that. So real quick, if you have no idea who Miss McKenna Riley is, we got a shout out, by the way, from Russell Brunson at, at 10X in front of 30,000 people because she builds my funnels and she is 16. Um, so what do you think about that? Last year, last year at 10X in Las Vegas, you and I had a conversation and you knew more about your, the finances of your mom's business than she did. <laughs> She's right on top of it. So I, I applaud you. She's a good one on your team, Forbes. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs? What do you think they're missing? Um, that's a really hard question. Well, no, but in terms of marketing and funnels and really being objective about their business, because she has clients and you actually help teach your clients Actually, I think the issue with entrepreneurs is you guys, you guys are like big thinkers and you want all of this stuff and you know where you're going. You know that you want to be there and you see the goal, you have the goal, but you don't ever make the goals to implement like the bigger, like there you have your big goal and it's the, sorry. No, 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 to go for it. So you've got your big goal of I want to be a millionaire, but you never make, my goal is to set up an email sequence. My goal is to make a funnel. To go up like that, that's you miss the structure there. You jump to millionaire. And so when I talk about I make funnels and I make this amount of money every month, you go, all right, done. All I have to do is make a funnel. Well, you have to make the steps in the funnel. My goal is to make one page or my 
task for the day is to make this page. I want it this long. It goes in increments. It doesn't just happen. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs go wrong is that the people that have made it worked so long and have gone through so much. And when you make someone that makes $9 million in revenue, only profits 2 million of it maybe because they spend 6 million, $8 million, seven on marketing. And that's everybody misses that. So entrepreneurs need to look at when it says revenue versus profit. Just yeah. <laughs> out of the mouth of McKenna. I love it. I love it. And you're so true. I mean, and that's, that's where you have to highlight the value of the team because entrepreneurs, that's where they live. They live up in that path less traveled and, and where they want to go. And when they try to get into the day-to-day, -day, many of them don't do a very good job because they live on the future. But when they surround themselves with the right people like you, McKenna, with the right people that can help make sure the processes and the structure is there, that's when they can truly find great success. So how did you get to, how did you learn about marketing? Uh, I was lucky enough to get you as a mom. <laughs> there you go. That was that wasn't even rehearsed. I yeah. love. <laughs> All you with your friends and do your own work. Thank you. Thank you. Just don't quit. Don't quit. Thank you. I love don't you. go back to the day job. Mm. Good it. to see you, sweetheart. Nice love, you. You. love you. That's been You're the best. We're gonna we're gonna we're quick, quick coming to the end of the main podcast, but she's Forbes is gonna stick around with me, and we're gonna do a little private one inside the private Facebook group called Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter and. Um, make sure if you're not part of it to go ahead and sign up for that because we're going to go a little deeper with Forbes. But Forbes, how people find you the best way? I have a new platform. Simply go to ForbesRiley360.com. You can find all my social media. You can find all my websites, the latest and every greatest. I got to tell you, and if you want a 360, you want to reach out to me. This is the coolest thing I've found in a long time. ForbesRiley360.com. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. Hold on with us for a second, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this segment. And again, more on the inside with Forbes. Take care. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Sharon Lecter. And for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.